Good morning. It's Philip with RTX Honeybees, December the 19th, 8.20 a.m., uh, 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we're expecting really cold weather here, as you are, all of you are across the nation. So uh, it's going to get down into the teens, maybe single digits here in the Dallas area. So uh, I'm not too concerned about my bees making it through. We're not going to have much precipitation, they say, but I do have uh, one colony that uh, is vulnerable. So I'm going to show you guys what I wanted to do to take care of them. All my outer covers are insulated. There's a three quarter inch piece of polyiso cyanurate uh, foam built into there. And there's also the, the additional space above that. Oh, probably on the average of about an inch or so. Is filled with fiberglass bat insulation. With the plywood, uh, I think I'm probably got about an R7 on those on my tops. Uh, these these right here have a little bit of a retrofit, but I think they have at least an R5 built in. I had to come back in and add insulation to those. However, this little guy, which is one of my swarm traps, has minimal insulation. First of all, there's a big space here because that's a feeder shim where I've been feeding these bees and there's probably not more than a three-eighths inch piece of plywood above below this metal so there's actually probably less insulation here than there is on the walls which means I could have some problem with some condensation but at the very least it's going to be uh, you know they're gonna have a hard time managing their heat so what I want to do is I'm gonna insulate this cover or actually a cover just just like it this size and then I'm going to remove this feeder shim and condense them down. And I just wanted to take you guys along on that and let me show you what, what I'm doing. Okay. My preferred insulation that I use is this three-quarter polystyrene. It has a foil face on one side. I think it's foil faced on both sides, but this side has this sort of branding print, printed on it. You can find it at Lowe's, Home Depot, different brands, but quarter inch polyisocyanurate. I think it's an R5. Um, but for the top that I'm going to put on that colony, just took a, another top off of one of my swarm traps. It's the same size. And I had this scrap of polystyrene. I think it's expanded polystyrene. It's pretty dense, but uh, I think it's about an inch thick. You see there. So it's probably also about an R5. It's not as, doesn't have as much insulating value as is this. Uh, the bees tend to eat polystyrene when you put it pretty close to their cluster. So I don't know if it'll work, but I'm going to try to simulate what this is using aluminum foil and spray adhesive. So first thing I have to do is cut cut this down to size. It almost fits perfectly, but I will make it fit here. I don't normally wear shorts in this weather, but I just came home from the from the gym, so I'm trying to get this done before I go to work. Take about a quarter inch off. I'm pretty big into scouting and I hope my scouts don't see me cutting toward myself like this. It's exactly what we train them not to do, but I am cutting off to the side of my leg. That's pretty good in there. Let's 
see if I can get it back out. Where's your hive tool when you need it? Does anybody else use this hive tool for a lot more than just working bees? I know I do. I don't know how I ever got along without it all these years. But it's just a handy thing. Fortunately, that's not quite long enough, so I'm going to have to waste a little bit. All right, we're going to try to take shiny side up or shiny side down. I don't want to start big controversy. Leave your vote in the comments section. I'm going to go shiny side down. Well, I may not be using the context uh, spray ad adhesive. Oh, there we go. Let's see how well this works. See if I can use the wind in my favor. So hopefully, I might as well go ahead and just wrap this all the way around, I guess. Hopefully this does two things. Hopefully it keeps the bees from chewing the foam and creates a radiant barrier. So the heat from the, the bees are generating will reflect back down. Um, in addition to hopefully this has enough uh, R value, or thermal resistance, that any condensation will form on the sides of the box, not the top of the box, and drip back down on the bees. So, there's a lot of people out there using the double bubble, which I think it's better than nothing, but double bubble is what's known as a, it's a radiant barrier more than a thermal barrier so if cold gets to that surface and it's a foil like that it's going to condense the moisture is going to condense there first this has to be blocked off from the this has to be blocked off from the cold so it needs to be closest to the heat source which in this case is the bees All right, here's what we have. Let's go put it on the bees. Like I said, it's 48 degrees. It sure feels cold in that. It's a very seems to be very humid or something, but it's overcast. I don't know how these bees are going to react. They're probably just the way it feels. I think they're clustered, but I don't know. They might come at me. I might have to run and put some protective protection on. But they're probably going to want to react to this point first. So what I'll do is close them off like that so they don't go out there. Now I'm going to open up the complete top and fairly quickly put this in place, but I will tell you that inside here is very possibly some jar feeders that are probably propolized to the top of the frame so that's probably going to irritate the bees in and of itself. So I guess if they come out and sting me that'll probably be more likes and views on the video. So Yeah, one just kind of came at me right there. 
but I want you guys to see what I'm seeing. So nice cluster of bees. So this next box is propolized down, so I'm probably going to have to rough them up a little bit to get that off of there. But let me do that as quick as possible. We're leaving these bees exposed, which is what I don't want to do. As a matter of fact, yeah, they're coming out. I think I'll go put my face covering on at least. Okay, this is interesting. But if you notice, the bees that came out of the top are flying back to the entrance and they can't get in. That's, that shows you how much they depend on their GPS system. So remember that when you're moving the entrance or moving the hives or using it to manipulate the bees in your favor. I'm going to work from the back of the colony because that's the least less side they are used to defending. So hopefully it takes them a little longer to find me. And I don't have any smoke. Yeah, you can probably hear they're getting after me a little bit. And this top is... Fortunately, there's no feeder jars in there. They're pinging off of me good, but I hadn't gotten stung yet. We'll see how long that lasts. Get off the edge, girls. Just trying to help here. I do have the right one, yeah? Let's do it. Now, there's one getting after my leg. First thing. <laughs> Good one, too. Okay. I want to open this entrance up so they can get back in. Come on. Oh, there. Instead of getting back in, it seemed like more were coming out. Second sting. They really go after my socks. Maybe they know what skunks are where they're black. Okay. So I want to put these back on. This one trying to sting me, but didn't. Oh, yes, it did. Delayed reaction. Okay. All right. Three stings. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and strap this down. It's not strapped down. It's just weighted with the bricks, but it's not that steady. It's very thin. Uh, four deep. Uh, deep frames. Actually, there's there's a, there's a different kind of frame in there. It's not just a deep frame, but that's for a later video. Here's one right here trying to sting through my jacket. They tend to not like these fuzzy clothes. So, anyway, that's all I have for you this morning. Hopefully, they'll be warmer through this weather. And uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later.